What's going on everyone? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to do a full walkthrough of my garage or what I like to call my bass cave. One of the biggest questions I get asked is how I like to stay organized with my tackle. So today we're going to address that. We're going to go through all my tackle, how I get organized and some DIYs that I've done to make my life easier at home. And hopefully by the end of this video, you found some things useful for yourself that you can utilize at home. Let's go. Look, organization is extremely important. Nothing is worse than trying to go on a fishing trip, trying to find those packs of baits or those hooks that you need for that fishing trip. You can't find it, so what do you do? You go to the store, you buy some more, and you end up finding your supply at home in a box or a shopping bag down the road. You're spending money when you don't need to, and I've done that many of times. After that happening countless of times, I've kind of created a system in a way so that I can stay organized so that I don't make those mistakes again. I think before we can start this walkthrough, we need to get this big old kayak out of the way. For those who are new here, this is my Hobie Pro Angler 14 360 Mike Iconelli Edition. This is my fishing kayak that I fish out of in my tournaments. And this is actually one that I'm building right now on the channel. Under this beast of a kayak is a rigging cart from Spare Hand Systems. It's on wheels, it's all metal construction. It makes it so that my life is easier to move this Thing around the saying sits around 140 850 pounds and yeah it's not easy to move around by itself so whenever i need to do things in a garage i can simply just move it out of the way and that is definitely the case for today so that we can see all this stuff behind us. Starting over here in the corner by the garage door, I have two metal shells that I picked up from Costco. They're about four feet by six feet. I like the metal ones. I've had the plastic ones, but eventually with the amount of tackle you put on it, they do sag over time. And I've always been afraid that it was gonna fall over. So I went with the metal ones. If you don't have that much tackle, definitely go with the plastic ones. But this pretty much houses all my tackle, some other miscellaneous stuff. I have camping gear, some stuff to go target shooting, stuff like that. As you can see right now, I have a bunch of kayak parts for this build right here. And yeah, it's just a little bit everywhere. I did not clean anything up before this video. This is just a real life scenario of what it looks like. But overall, I feel like it looks pretty organized. So if you look behind me, one common thing is that all my stuff is pretty much labeled. I like to keep it labeled when you have a bunch of bags of plastics that are from the same brand, like for me, all my Z-Man stuff. It's hard to see what they are, right? They all look the same from afar, so I like to label them. Dymo Label Maker is what I use. I bought this one like four years ago and it has worked well. All you gotta do is just replace the cartridges once in a while and you can label a whole bunch of things. This is how I like to stay organized. Everything is labeled, so if I know that I need some trick shots, I know they're right there. If I know I need some goat toads, they're right there and that way I can keep everything together. Which leads me to the next part and that's bins. I like to utilize these Sterilite bins to organize my tackle. They're relatively cheap. You can get them pretty much anywhere if admires Amazon what it is. And most of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about today, I'll leave in the description below so that you can look for them yourselves. But these fit perfectly for most plastics that I've found from Z-Man, if you want to put Yamamoto, Strike Clean, whatever it is, these single ones, you can fit all of them in there perfectly. There's perfect width. I can label what those baits are and I can actually divide them in color as well. So that's usually what I do. And then you have these much bigger ones. These ones, like this is my like Ned rig. From big TRD to finesse TRD, I can keep those in there. What I do is cut a piece of cardboard and put it down the middle so I can divide that. Or another way to utilize this is put your much bigger plastics in there as well. So like these, I have giant TRDs, I have, turbo fatties these all come in much bigger packages so i throw them in here and that's a perfect way to keep these organized in a much bigger container as well for tackle boxes i've tried a bunch over the years the ones i like to use are these bass mafia ones so for example here's one of my chatter bait boxes one of my jackhammers as a gasket that goes all around they have a new version of this that i haven't gotten my hands on but Nice gas that it goes around so you know moisture's not gonna get in. That is the worst thing about tackle boxes is that if they don't have this gasket, you're gonna get moisture in there. Eventually all your hooks are gonna rust. And for a box like this where my jackhammers are, 
I don't want any of those things getting rusted. That's a lot of waste of money in the long run. Then you have your double deep boxes, 3,700 double deep. This one is just one of my hard swim bait boxes. Nothing fancy in here, just some, I don't know, Sly Guys, Roman Main Negotiator, obviously S Waivers, Gantorel, stuff like that. Double deep is great for those big crankbaits. So those bigger swim baits, all that stuff where you can't fit it in a single stack, 3,700 box. All right, well, let's get a little bit deeper into the shells. Up here, just got some kayak stuff, Black Pack Pro. I have my mount for my motor. These are some boxes for the kayak build. Shh, can't know about those yet. Uh, I have some of these bigger clear boxes, just with random stuff. That's definitely not kayak tech swim baits. I just have random stuff in there like marker buoy. It looks like I have a pair of goggles in there. Uh, there's a lighter in there, some owner B sucks. That's kind of just a junk one. I got some gun parts in this one. Some of my boxes for my scopes and stuff, my red dots. I have one for braided line. So we'll pull this one down to take a look at. So in here, I got some line. Most of the line that I use is Power Pro. So Max Quattro, I love that stuff. Uh, Super 8 Slick V2 Moonshine. Love that color. But yeah, just a bunch of braid in here. This is where I keep them in. Some spools that I've had over the years. Some Dacron that I like to use as backing, but nothing fancy there, just some braid that I like to use for my bait casters, my spinning, all that type of things. Underneath that braided line box was my fluorocarbon box. This is where I keep most of my bulk spools of fluorocarbon. Seaguar and Bizex is what I like to use. I've had my trust in this. I've also been playing around with the Shimano Mastiff. That has been great so far. I haven't had any break offs. I've tried a bunch of different line over the years. And man, I tell you what, a lot of them either has too much memory or they don't have a lot of abrasion resistance and I've broken off a lot of fish. So Seaguar and Bizex is what I trust. Not partner with them by any means, but that's what I like to use. And yeah, been playing around with this Mastiff been liking that so far probably jumping all over the place but this is actually one of those diys i did this is my line spooling station and well i guess also holding my air compressor hose and my extension cable too but i did this by going to home depot just getting some longer screws some washers wing nut some springs it adds tension to this so that you can spool your line because when you spool your line you want tension on that line so that you get a nice solid wrap around the reel so this is one thing that i've done so all i do is tie tag end to my reel and then i'll just reel in the line over time and that's why i buy bulk spools by no means does anybody need this but i go through line a lot if there's a big tournament coming up I want to have a fresh spool line so I make no mistakes on the water. So this is something that I made so that I can be more efficient when I'm on the water. Not going to lie, this is a lot more work than I thought. And I don't know how some people do a full walkthrough video. I'm like going from one side to another. I don't know. It's just crazy. But we're going to go back to this corner and walk through the rest that's over here. So we don't jump around everywhere. We're going to start from section by section on the shelf and just work our way through. So I saw this earlier. This is where I keep most of my bigger plastics, Giant TRD, Mac Fatties are in there. This is my TRD, Finesse TRD, Big TRD, those are all staying in there. Battery for my Torquedo 1103, which I no longer have because I'm getting a new one. So that was my backup battery. Behind this, what do we have? Some soft swim baits right in there. This is just some random swim baits. Low creeper trash fish, what do we got? We got some mag drafts. We got some Bass Mafia Dangerous Swim Baits. Bunch of six inch swim baits. I like to throw these. I feel like, you know, there's just a good size bait that works for large mouth and small mouth. Underneath that six inch swim bait box, we got another bin that has just, as you can tell from the label, is an old box of craws. Got some yum back here. It looks like net bait in the back, a little bit of yellow. Guggen, Missile Baits D-Bomb. This is stuff that actually I haven't used at all in the last couple of years. So one thing I usually do is I'll go through Tackle and I'll donate stuff to local clubs. There's a high school club, the Bass Federation. Some high school anglers usually donate some stuff to them or even some of the clubs that I fish, Oregon Kayak Bass Fishing, I've given out a bunch of baits that I no longer use anymore. Some stuff is just better off in other people's hands and that might be one of those boxes as well. Moving on, let's see, behind the battery, we got some Kytec swim baits. I have definitely gone through a Kytec phase before. 
and yeah, just a bunch of random Kitek baits, 2.8s. I think these are mostly small mouse, uh, 4.3. Uh, not as organized as I'd like it to be. That's a good color, Hasu Silver Shiner. I like that one. But probably messing up my organization, but a bunch of random Kitek stuff in there. Then behind that, we got some big worms. This is my big worm box. Certain places, certain timing, I like to throw those big worms. And I'm talking about old monsters. Mag old monsters, there's ribbon tail worms. I like throwing those. A lot of this is uh, some straight tail stuff. I haven't used a trick worm in a long time. What do we got? Trench hogs, is that what those are called? Yeah, trench hogs. And then some random stuff that I've had over time. Really just a random box. To the right, this is a bin that goes in my Hobie with some parts that I pulled from my last build bunch of wiring transducer wire stuff like that this is my kind of back supply of bins and lids that i like to use sometimes if i go on a fishing trip and i'm like well i don't want to take a whole bin of trick shots i'll actually utilize some of these bins and put them in one of these ones so that i can have assortment of baits down the road so like i'll grab trick shots i'll grab i don't know some other stuff it'd be like okay i'm gonna build a drop shot box on the road so usually that's what I'll do there. Next to that, we got some random things. What is this, engine oil? Looks like two stroke oil from my old boat. I got some Dakota lithium batteries, 10 amp hour from my first kayak, and then an 18 amp hour, 12 volt. But uh, what else we got? We got a charger, looks like a 10 amp hour charger. And we got some more tackle, so. This is where a majority of my plastics are, other than the little bait wall that you guys see over there. So this one, what do we got? Some Robo Worms, Margarita Mutilator. It used to be something that I used a lot down in California and also over here. Five inch Senkos, self-explanatory right there. And then some six inch Senkos right here. Whole box of those. Got Z-Man Trick Shots right here. We got some random z-man swim baits a whole bunch of stuff in there i won't go through every single thing if you guys want a little more detailed walkthroughs of certain swim baits or whatever i use feel free to specify what you're looking for and i can definitely do that flukes i got some flukes in here sending jerk shads and what else we got just a whole bunch of stuff a bunch of different flukes diesel minnows again some swim baits this is a dedicated diesel minnow box I like to use those for smallmouth, pro craws and turbo craws in there, goat toads, fatty Z's, Ned rig baits. So this is like random stuff like TRD craws. And then looks like some other stuff back there. I think there's some like missile baits and stuff that I haven't used in years. Zinkers, I like to use those for like Nico rigging. Hula sticks, tubes, easy tubes, and uh, there's a bunch of other stuff in there as well. Some bang sticks. Let me move these and we can go through what's behind it. All right, so behind the initial row, we got some more sling blades, Z-Man spinner baits that I like to use, some pop shads. This is just a bunch of random stuff in here, some miscellaneous hard baits. Uh, one thing I used to fish was Berkeley Big Bass and Bose Tournament, so I had to keep a supply of these for those tournaments. I don't even know when's the last time these have been used. Got some rage bugs. Looks like in here is just some chatter baits, cross eyes. I think there's some big blades in there, stuff like that. Some mist baits, random stuff. Probably stuff that can be donated, honestly. General chatter bait trailers, Zacos, Zacos, some other brands, stuff like that. Chunk trailers. I used to be big in packet chunks. And uh, yeah, I haven't used those in a long time. This will probably be given away as well. Brush hogs and lizards. So obviously Z-Man's version is the ones I've been using, but we also got some brush hogs and stuff like that that hasn't been used in a while, honestly. Some of these things may have a time and place. Hula grubs in here, twin tail grubs, some bed fishing baits, some old stuff. I don't even know what's in here. A bunch of random things, big bite baits, some zoom. All right, I think the next part is gonna require two hands, but tackle boxes, 1800 size Bass Mafia box. This is like Nico rigging, Senko type stuff. Got my bands, Nico rig weights. Hopefully you guys can see that, but that's there. Some of the Z-Man version. Yeah, those guys, got those all in there. On the water, terminal tackle box, Bass Mafia terminal coffin. This is my favorite thing ever. 
I like to keep everything organized in here. You have these coffins that I've actually labeled right there. And then, yeah, I just keep my hooks, my weights, all my tungsten weights, some miscellaneous stuff in here. Let me know if you guys want me to go through that a little bit more down the road. Got a backup one just in case. Got a little jig box here. Love throwing jigs whenever I can for largemouth. Bunch of just random stuff. Uh, a lot of cross size jigs and then some other stuff from over the years. I want to say that's like a dirty jigs or something, but yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. White jigs for bed fishing. I love using white jigs for bed fishing, but yeah, jig box. Chatterbait box. This is kind of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, three quarter ounce jackhammers. There we go, three quarter ounce jackhammers. Whole bunch of random stuff. Uh, crazy assortment of big blades. Cross size, whole bunch of stuff. Jackhammer box. Next row, you guys saw it earlier, jackhammer box. Honestly, I don't really throw a lot of hard baits anymore, so. Don't make fun of my collection. Some medium crankbaits, nothing crazy. Yeah, just a bunch of random stuff. Not much. Don't throw a lot of hard baits anymore. I'll be honest, mostly, as you can see, soft bait guy now. I don't know why. Just go through phases over time. This is a square bill lipless box. And I hopefully the autofocus is actually working pretty well, but a bunch of random square bills, lipless, LV500s. Some uh, Jackal TN, stuff like that for all my uh, Clear Lake guys. Yeah, bunch of random stuff in there. Again, I don't really throw these stuff too much. Got a football jig box, cross eyes footballs from Z-Man. A lot of those ones I've used. And then you guys know, you know, Kitech tungsten football head. Actually caught my PB spot on the PB and J, hopefully that is focused on there. Caught one of those with a finesse TRD on the back. That was a 5.9 spotted bass. Well, there goes all those boxes. But uh, jerkbait box, Lucky Craft, some of those new flash boosts from Shimano, World Minnows, nothing crazy. I think some of my stuff is actually in some other boxes as well from tournaments. I haven't been too organized. Nothing in here currently, but this is like one of those boxes that I take to tournaments. Like, oh, it's gonna be a lot of swim baiting. So throw like six inch soft swim baits, hard baits, stuff like that. I just got some random guy tech and stuff in there. A lot of times I like to have extra boxes to fill out on the go. And then another guy tech box. So maybe a little hard to see back here. This is like some old plain old flambo boxes with baits that I really do not use anymore. Some uh, deep crank baits right there. Square bill, nothing fancy. I think this is, we're just gonna go by real quick so this video doesn't take too long. Whopper popper, there's uh, only one in there. I think it's cause it has a rusted hook. Jerk baits, some old jerk baits, a lot of no name stuff. And we got a lipless crank bait box, a little spook box, medium crank bait box with some old stuff. A very empty hard swim bait box with a, looks like a Spro BBZ one in there. Nothing crazy back there. I always keep these boxes just in case. Probably could empty these out eventually over time. Just breaking all the tackle boxes at this point. All right, double deeps. Showed you guys earlier. Hard swim baits, Ganta rails. Gotta love that for that spawn bite. S waivers, deep crankbait box. Uh, some stuff from a local guy who paints crankbaits over here. That's a color that uh, obviously has been chewed. Definitely if there's any hard baits that I like to throw, deep cranking is one of them. I love doing that. Just getting a crankbait deeper than most people fish a crankbait in this area. And then we got soft swim bait box right here. Bunch of random stuff, a lot of huds. I love throwing huds in my local lake. It gets stock trout all the time. And then we got some random stuff, a little mat lures as well. Soft swim bait box. And back here we got a bunch of old Plano boxes. I'll be honest, I haven't looked through this stuff in a long time. Miss Terminal Tackle, bunch of lead stuff. Okay, now we got this section right here. Got my graphs. Elite FS9 from Lawrence. Love these things. Probably should put this somewhere where they're not going to drop. Let's see, starting this corner. 
extra prop for my Torquedo 1103 catch board. That's where I keep this one. I got a Z-Man little tackle bag that I carry extra plastic in. 3,600 boxes. This is a uh, swim bait hooks, a bunch of random stuff in there. Jig head box. I think I actually took some stuff out of this, but yeah. A bunch of shaky heads, football heads, Ned rig heads, stuff like that. I like to organize my stuff that way. Got a little Kitech box right here. Old tube box, extra boxes. Old box with some bladed baits. Can't even tell you when's the last time I threw this one, but. And then uh, looks like I keep some cast masters in here for trout fishing. Little cast master. Trying to go through this as quick as possible. Random wake bait box. I don't throw a whole lot of wake baits. This is actually caught an old personal best largemouth. It was like a 6'3 Jackal Mikey. When I used to fish the pro ams, used to go to Shasta and this was a thing. A little float and fly for spotted bass. That was a pretty cool float. And then a little marabou hair jig. Man, good times. So we need to go back to Shasta. And then back there, just some extra 3,600 boxes. Nothing super crazy. 3,700, double deep. Just a bunch of random lead stuff, honestly. I think there's some tungsten in there. And here, jig heads, a bunch of custom football heads that I have my buddy Tom pour for me. So that's why I keep in there. More 3700s in there, just empty. And then this side, more 3700 deeps. This is where the rest of my hard baits go. This more frequently used stuff. Some glide baits. Depths 175. Mag draft. This, I don't even know what's in here. Whole bunch of stuff. Whopper ploppers. This is one of those boxes that I put in my black pack when I go fishing. Got a random top water box right here. Got ploppers, some spooks. Still need to figure out a place to throw this thing. Bunch of jackal gavachos. It's one of my favorite frogs to throw. Another box that I take in my black pack. Chatterbait and jigs usually goes in there. This is a, another miscellaneous box. What I'm realizing is that I need to organize some tackle after today. Put some stuff where they're supposed to go. Some spooks. Frogs, Hellraisers. I'm guessing this was a top water box. Treble hook box with all my owner hooks. Stinger trebles. Bulk packs. Never know when you need to replace hooks. If I feel like there's a hard bait that's probably going to catch a bunch of fish during a tournament or something, I'll for sure replace all my hooks. Split ring pliers so that I can do that more effectively. Okay, so down here we got one of these Plano Sportsman boxes. Just got some kayak parts in there. One thing that I like to utilize is these Bass Mafia money bags. This one is like an old one. Put my plastics in there. This is actually stuff for the 2000 giveaway winner. Quick intermission, real quick, just want to say congratulations to the 2000 subscriber giveaway winners. Brandon Solens, Trey McNeil, and Philip Babcock. Congratulations, guys. And to everyone else who left a comment for suggestions on upcoming videos, I appreciate it. I've read every single one of your comments and replied to every single one of them. That's all appreciated. Definitely wanted to get an idea of what you guys are all looking forward to, and that gives me an idea moving forward. Now let's get back to the video. Obviously kayak parts laying around. I've just had these bins laying around for a while. A bunch of random kayak parts. Uh, I actually thought about putting a bilge bump in the kayak one time. Random stuff in there, some random tackle stuff. More of these little coffins for terminal coffin. All the dividers, I usually keep those in bungees. I got coal tags and stuff from being a co-angler. Over here, we got boxes for my slat wall pegs. I got some shorter ones and longer ones in the back. Some PFDs for fishing as a co-angler, which kind of leads us to this section, which is my slat wall board. I've done the peg board, it's nice, but the slat wall just looks a little bit better in my opinion. This is where I keep the majority of my bulk stuff so that I can keep track. A lot of these plastics up here are the ones I use the most, so I can easily see when something is running low compared to the rest and I need to restock. Owner hooks here, all my owner hooks, Z-Man hooks and stuff like that. But yeah, this is in my opinion, the best way to keep your inventory if you have the space. It's just really nice to see what you're running low on and you can visually just pretty much shop and take whatever you need. Again, most of the stuff, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna get it for yourself. But yeah, I mean, these things are pretty easy. Find a place to put them, put some baits, some hooks, whatever you want on it. This is actually some little trays from when I had my pegboard I just utilized for this. Sharpie, fizz tool, random stuff, cork seal, real lube, random stuff there, some extra line, stuff like that. 
this is actually something that I like to do. So these little baggies, I'll actually take my hooks and put them in there, get them off of Amazon. Little baggies right there. I'll leave that linked in the description too. I like to put my hooks in there because if you put them in tackle boxes, a lot of times those hooks will actually dull from bouncing around. So if I get a chance, I will definitely put some of my like drop shot hooks or Senko hooks, all that type of stuff in these. Actually, before doing the video, I actually came to the garage because I needed to figure out what I needed to restock on. So I have a little template on Excel and I can write out name. There's a size, color, product number, quantity, so I can make sure I can figure out what I need to restock on. That's my little process of staying up to date on things. As you can see, top of the garage, we got some banners, some Shimano G Loomis banners from work at some trade shows before. I got some extra banners right there, but this is one thing that I do on my metal shelf. Get these little magnets from Amazon, and that's where I kind of hang a lot of my baits. If something needs to dry, I usually throw them up there. Bunch of spinner baits double buzz baits, buzz baits. Keep my pliers here as well and some hooks that like, eh, I went fishing and those hooks, I didn't even use them. So maybe I could use them on the next trip, but that's how I like to utilize that. As you can see, there's a lot going on in the garage. So I apologize if this is kind of everywhere. Got surge protector to charge my batteries and stuff on this table. This workbench, I picked it up from a garage sale and then stained the wood. It's an eight foot workbench, so it fits perfectly. The width of the slatwood board and I just, this is just like a computer desk mat that I put here if I need to work on stuff. Clean my reels, so a bunch of reels right here. Shimano reels is what I use and then I have this little mat that's like a thing that was given to dealers. These are some of my kind of recent boxes from some of the reels. I actually, one thing I want to do is put a eight foot shelf over the top of this board so I can start stacking things on top as well. If I have to, I'll take down some banners if you can't see them, but that's one thing I do want to do. A lot of people throw away the boxes. I don't like to, cause I don't keep my reels forever. Every couple of years I do sell them. So I like to give the original box to the new owner. Then over here, we got just some random stuff. Q-tips to clean my reels. I got some brushes for cork seal, some nail polish. Oh, there goes that brush. Some nail polish for my Roman main negotiator so that the wood doesn't get waterlogged. Label maker, you guys saw that before. I do have an air compressor, but sometimes a bottle one is nice to have as well. Camera batteries. This is actually the best way to take your line off. So if I'm ever replacing line, this Berkeley one, you just put it on a drill and you can actually take your line off a lot quicker. Let me know if you guys want to see how that works. Then we have some more outlets just in case. More kayak parts. This is my plate with Active Target 2, my yak powered, I'll be going in the kayak. Then I have this little Craftsman organizer that put a bunch of random stuff in here, you know, just bolts, screws, nuts from kayak parts, Hobie through hole. If you have a Hobie, you'll recognize those. Bunch of random stuff, some Lowrance stuff. I mean, this is just the best way I've been able to be organized with all those little things, you know. One thing that I've learned is to hang the swim bait so that the tails don't get messed up. Not the end of the world, like some of those ones that are in those boxes, you can just boil them and dip them in water. A lot of times they will go back to almost normal. And we got a scale, or Rapala scale that I use. Nothing's really fully organized, but typically this is about what it looks like most of the time. And over here, we got this little bin. I got a box where my battery came in from Torquedo bunch of decals a lot of stuff that i use for giving seminars usually give a lot of stuff out to or for some of my personal stuff what else we got we got some real covers sunglass covers some covers for baits honestly random stuff in here some gopro stuff bottom some extra hats gloves shirts stuff like that got the little heater in the corner that's how i try to keep warm Got my Hobie paddles, Yakutek boomstick, my parking pole right there. That's my co-angler bag, Shimano Black Moon bag. That is the OG one, I love that thing. And then for some of my camping trips, if I'm multiple day, that's actually a little small five or 10 gallon propane tank. And then in this corner is obviously some of the trophies and stuff from over the years. Whole bunch of stuff from checks from the last two years of kayak fishing. Up top we got native fifth place from the Big Fish Power Hour this last fall, summer, whatever it was. Uh, Angler of the Year 2022, which was also the rookie season, which is pretty cool. And then obviously Kayak Bass Classic, that was our championship last fall. So a lot of the stuff is actually co-angler stuff. Uh, we got 
it's hard to see, but a clear one right here. That is my first co-angler of the year, first place. Then we got 2018 co-angler of the year with a different club right there. 2019 co-angler of the year with the same club as 18. And then 2020, that was my big tournament. And that cup is from the Wild West Bass Show Pro-Am on the Columbia River. Got first place in that tournament. Came in with almost 19 pounds of smallmouth on the first day. Second day, I had 12 and some change. And on the last day, my boater's motor actually broke down. And it was a struggling day, but kind enough just to squeeze by and win first place. That was my biggest win for sure and biggest payout. Man, what I did is I actually some of the early on features in some magazines and stuff. This is an owner hooks catalog where a picture of me was in. And then this was Bass Angler Magazine from that win on the Columbia River. And just some other stuff. Third place, this was a year before my first ever Pro-Am on the Columbia River. Got third place as a co-angler. Second place, 10 mile open, just a local tournament. TBF semifinals, co-angler at second place on the Columbia River. Then this is kind of where it all started for me. So Bass Master College Series, I went to Oregon State University for a couple years and was able to go to Lake Chattooga. That was my first experience of like really what these tournaments can be like and that got me hooked on it. This is the football jig from my PB Spotted Bass. Then there's a Jeff that I used when I won my first kayak tournament, which ended up being that one right there, Boone's Ferry, Big Bass, third place from the Classic, and then some other ones over the years. But here's a closer look at some of those co-angler of the year trophies. Then over here is my rod rack. This is a dealer rod rack from Shimano that was given to me. In my opinion, this is the best way to organize your rods. I've tried like doing horizontal racks and stuff. Unfortunately in the house, sometimes it's tough with like eight foot rods, but this has definitely been the best one. I've used to shove my rods in a corner, but I'd always frame my line or break ceramics on my guides, stuff like that. I know that a lot of you want me to do a full walkthrough video, so we're not gonna go through all my rods and reels, but that is how I keep them. Got some rod gloves that I usually keep wrapped around my rods. You can see a lot of extra ones in the back with those rod gloves. But yeah, that's pretty much a walkthrough of the Bass Cave. Nothing super crazy, but definitely has been a lot of improvement over the years. And hopefully some of the things that you guys have seen in my garage, you found useful so that you can do it for yourself at home. That's definitely going to be a wrap for today. I definitely realized that there's a couple more things that I need to clean up in my tackle organization after walking through everything. But hey, look, that's just the reality of it. No matter how organized I try to be, there's definitely some things I get in this place and it's definitely a way better than it was before for sure. As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.